Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Sizdek. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and product manager here at Stolting in Psychology. We're a publisher and distributor of psychological assessments and other special education materials and have been for over 130 years. In this training video for the nonverbal Stroop card sorting test, we'll go through test overview, how to administer the test, how to score the test, and test interpretation and application. So what is the nonverbal Stroop card sorting test? Well, it is based on the Stroop color and word test, a classic and extensively used test of brief executive functions. Let's look at an example of the Stroop color and word test. The Stroop color and word test begins by asking a person to read how many words that are words describing colors in a certain amount of time. Let's do an example and see how many you can read in 10 seconds in this congruent condition. Okay, keep track of how many you read. Next, a person is asked how many colors they can say when it's colors only within a certain amount of time. See how many you can say in 10 seconds. Ready? Okay, not too bad. Finally, in this condition, the colors and words are mixed. This is known as the incongruent condition. In this, now let's see how many colors you can say in 10 seconds. Ready? Go ahead. A little bit harder, right? Well, it's actually going to be harder for most everyone. And that is known as the Stroop effect. That difficulty a person experiences in that incongruent condition is due to a strain placed on a person's resources by the competing stimuli. We want to compare that difficulty they have to what a person is actually capable of, which we measure when we measure their performance in the congruent condition how many words they were able to say, and how many colors they were able to say. We're then able to an, obtain an objective measure of the interference by subtracting their performance in the incongruent condition, when the colors and words are mixed, from their performance in the congruent condition. So a higher number means that they had more difficulty with executive functions that are involved with this task. Being able to inhibit uh, attention to competing stimuli, being able to focus on one object at a time, right? And we can see why that is. A higher number means they did better on the congruent condition and less well on the incongruent condition. If it's a smaller number, that means their performance tended to be more equal in those conditions. This is the basis from which the nonverbal Stroop card sorting test is derived. So the Stroop color and word test is an efficient and effective measure of executive functions, but what if there are language difficulties a person experiences, reading difficulties, cultural differences, hearing issues? Well, in that case, we've got the nonverbal Stroop card sorting test. It is a nonverbal test that has been found to elicit the same Stroop effect as in the verbal version. It's good for a variety of ages, ages 3 to 75. Only takes a short amount of time to administer, about 5 to 10 minutes for administration and scoring and has been nationally standardized, so you're able to obtain normative scores comparing a person's performance to similar aged peers. When would you use the nonverbal Stroop? Well, anytime you want a brief, efficient assessment of executive functions, including memory, inhibition, 
and organization. Because it's been used extensively clinically and in research, you can trust that there's a large body of evidence supporting the use of the nonverbal stroop. It has a broad application with diverse populations. So if you want to test that's going to be good with a variety of people in different settings, this is a good choice. It's easy to administer and score, yet it will yield extensive clinical information that we'll see when we cover interpretation. The nonverbal Stroop test has had a significant amount of research. In addition, the Stroop test itself, upon which the nonverbal Stroop test has been based, also has a great deal of research. There's been findings that those with ADHD, learning difficulties, autism spectrum disorders, and anxieties have greater difficulties with Stroop effect tasks. And, in addition, modifications to those Stroop tests in which the stimuli are related to the particular diagnosis have found that those people have additional difficulties with those tasks. There's been a history of modifying color and word Stroop tasks. Some examples include having an object and word which don't match, having objects with the color that's inappropriate, and that's led to the development of the nonverbal Stroop, where we've also seen significant differences in scores among those with attention, cognitive, or substance use issues. So the nonverbal Stroop is often used in research, in clinical application, or for clinical trials, in which a brief, efficient exam of executive functions, particularly inhibition of impulses, attention, processing speed with distractors in the presence, and to rule out the influences of language are desired. You can see references to these studies and others in the manual and also at the home page. Let's give an overview of administering the nonverbal Stroop. Of course, you'll have want to have read the manual extensively and have practiced giving the test before actually administering it to any client. The materials that you need are all contained within the nonverbal Stroop kit. They consist of the nonverbal Stroop board, a record form that you'll need for each client, the color congruent cards from 1 to 32, the color incongruent cards from 1 to 72, and a stopwatch good to the second. Let's take a look at what this would look like if you're actually teaching the test. This is how the setup will look from the examinee's perspective. Again, you will start with the color congruent condition and you will start by teaching the color congruent trials what to do. Point at the location of the cross and the color. Then, point to the space that is next to the same color on the board. You will then pick up the card and place it on the board in that corresponding position. Smile and nod, showing the examinee this is what's expected. You will then do the same thing for the next card. Point and at the card at the color and then point at the board in the space with the same color. Place that card where it goes. At this point you can then encourage the examinee to do the same thing non-verbally and make sure that the examinee will place it in the right place. If they do not then you can correct them and show them where in fact to place it. Teaching the color incongruent trials is the same. You'll point at the location of the cross in color, making sure to point at the color where the cross is. You'll then point to the space where that same color is located on the board. You will pick the card up and place it where it goes on the board. 
smile and nod. You will then do the same thing with the next color. Because the cross is in the red, we place it in the red square. You will then indicate to the examinee that he or she should then place the next card. If the examinee places it in the correct position, smile and nod. If they do not, shake your head, show them where the card goes, and then allow them to do the next. Let's now view how the test would look as if it were actually being given. We'll look at a live action example of the test being administered between two actors. We'll look at the test in several different ways being administered. Let's start first just by viewing the test from beginning introduction until the end when the scores are being calculated, viewing the examiner and examinee. Hi, uh, we're going to start a nonverbal test now. During this test, I'm going to be giving you directions nonverbally uh, by showing you what to do. So I won't be able to answer any questions or say anything to you. Okay? Yeah. Okay. This allows us to construct a profile for our examinee based on the major scores in the nonverbal stroop. We can plot these scores to obtain a profile that we can interpret more easily visually. We can see that some of these scores are above the score 65 threshold. We'll talk next in the interpretation about what that could signify. Now that we've covered how to get the scores in the nonverbal Stroop test, we will cover what the scores indicate. We're going to talk about interpretation of the nonverbal Stroop. There's a great deal of information that can be gleaned from the nonverbal Stroop test. First of all, there's a validity check. This is a measure of the examinee's understanding or willingness to complete the test. The most informative overall measure on the nonverbal Stroop is the Stroop Effect score. That is a reflection of the examinee's ability to manage interference relative to processing speed. That's obtained by subtracting the color congruent ratio from the color incongruent ratio. So we can see those in those different parts, the color incongruent ratio is the examinee's ability to manage interference, inhibit impulses, and attend to a competing stimuli quickly. The CC ratio is about processing speed and accuracy when stimuli are congruent. With both of these ratios, remember they are a measure of time divided by accuracy. So if there's a problem with either of those ratios, is due to either the time or the accuracy. So we should examine both of those. We'll want to look at color incongruent time and color congruent time. That is just an indication of processing speed, 
without an accuracy component. The color congruent incorrect and color incongruent incorrect deal with the accuracy. In terms of an interpretation strategy, interpretation of the nonverbal stroop should follow general interpretation strategies employed with most psychological assessments. That is, starting with a validity check, moving to general interpretations, and then following a streamline of more accurate and more specific interpretations. So we will start with the validity check, asking ourselves whether the profile is valid or invalid. If it's invalid, we're not going to be able to make any accurate or meaningful interpretations. If it is valid, we will then assess the Stroop effect. And from that, examine within the Stroop effect that is made up of the CI ratio and CC ratio. Both of those ratios are a measure of time over accuracy, which is color incongruent and color congruent time and number incorrect. Let's 